How can I be more emotionally available in my relationship? Today we're going to talk about how to be more emotionally available in your relationship and a, and a couple of simple exercises that you can do to practice getting in touch with your own emotions and then being able to share them with your partner. What's going on you guys? Tyler, your Wandering Therapist here. I'm excited to talk a little bit about emotional availability. This is a common topic and it seems to happen more often in my conversations with couples on the men's side more than on the women's side when they come into my office and they say, hey, what's going on? What do you need help with? And she often says, I just don't feel like he's emotionally connecting with me. And she's looking for a deeper level of involvement, a deeper level of vulnerability, a deeper level of understanding where he's at emotionally from day to day. And part of what's happening is, is that for a lot of men, they happen to compartmentalize things so well in their lives that sometimes when they're asked how their day was, they honestly say good because they put everything away that was gone on at work or other relationships and they're just at home and that's all there is. And so they just feel like they don't need to talk about it anymore because they've already put it away. But there's some other things that happen in relationships that can be worked on and that can help develop a deeper sense of connection with each other. Uh, there's a, a term that sometimes gets used for people who learn to shut their emotions off and it's called alexithymia. And what alexithymia is, is where emotions become blunted and they become hard to identify. And I think there's a lot of people in marriages where one of our ways of protecting ourselves from being vulnerable or being hurt is, is that we learn to sort of blunt or numb our emotions because those things can sometimes feel pretty vulnerable. And yet those are also the places where we can find the deepest part of our connection. So one way to overcome that alexithymia is the practice of actually pausing throughout your day to identify what you're feeling in a given moment. Oftentimes I give my clients this challenge, I'm gonna give it to you, to set an alarm on your phone once or twice a day. And when that alarm goes off, do this simple exercise. It's called the triangle of awareness and you're basically going to just notice what's going on physically in your body from head to toe. So you're gonna notice every sensation from head all the way down to toe. And then you're gonna identify what thoughts are going through your mind as it relates to those things. And then you're gonna practice giving it a name emotionally. So if I'm doing it right now, I'm gonna say, you know what? I feel a little bit of pressure behind my eyes. I feel some tension in my neck. There's a little bit of tightness in my chest. I can feel my heart pounding. Uh, my legs are a little bit tight. What am I thinking? Well, I'm thinking that I'm on this video screen and I'm talking to people and I'm feeling a little bit anxious and nervous. Okay, what's the emotion? I'm anxious. And once I identify that, I'm just gonna allow myself to identify that. And if I practice that on a regular basis, just throughout my day, what I'm now doing is I'm training myself in my prefrontal cortex to practice identifying the emotions that are going through me constantly throughout the day without me paying attention. If you practice that exercise, you can then go home to your significant other. And here's the second exercise that you can do to help develop a deeper level of emotional connection and some deeper emotional intelligence. We do something called check-ins. And when you check in with your partner, there's a couple of rules. One of the first things is, is that one person is going to share what they were thinking or what they were feeling throughout the day. I have people check in in a few categories, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and socially. And when they check in, they check in in detail. So it's more than just a one word answer. It's not good or fine or bad. It's here's what happened in my day to day. This is how I'm feeling emotionally. This is what's gone on. This was the high point or the low point of my day for these reasons. And then the partner who's listening can practice two things. They can ask clarifying questions to get more details and they can practice listening with empathy, meaning showing presence, letting go of judgment and practicing the art of listening. And when couples will do that on a consistent basis, day in and day out, it leads to the opportunity to have a deeper sense of connection with each other and it expands the ability to express and share and identify emotions that are going on throughout the day. So those two practices can be really beneficial in extending your ability to be in touch with yourself emotionally and be able to express yourself emotionally with the people that matter most to you. Thank you so much for being here with me. If you found this to be valuable for you, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you're facing particular struggles that you need help with or roadblocks that you're running into, please submit a question. I'd be happy to answer it for you.